In Chinatown, no one hears the screams when the gangster comes to collect. They reference me as Bakwai. Bakwai means white ghost. But those on the receiving end of the fist of John Willis call him the white devil. Willis is the unlikeliest of Chinatown mob bosses, believed to be the first white guy ever to rise to the top of an Asian crime syndicate in the US. With a significant other and their daughter, Willis looks like the doting dad of a picture-perfect family. But it was his other family, the Chinese mafia, where he ruled with an iron fist. You know, there was murders, there was shootings, there, there was, you know, many things that happened, you know? So how did this once pudgy little boy from working class Dorchester claw his way to the top levels of the mob in Boston? Opportunity. He was unique as far as walking uh, through Chinatown as the only white guy, uh, bigger, stronger, taller uh, than most of the people he was hanging out with. Boston journalist Bob Holleran has chronicled the fascinating story of the white Asian crime boss in his new book, White Devil. Willis's world changed in his early teens when his mom suddenly died from diabetes. He was left on his own and um, became an angry young man. He started uh, lifting weights, uh, used steroids, became a bodybuilder. Um, so he got himself a job as a bouncer at a bar. That job in a Chinatown bar changed his life forever. One night, a Chinese mob boss got roughed up. Not knowing who he was, Willis came to his aid. And then, um, you know, after that, he gave me a number to call him if I ever need anything. A few weeks later, Willis, cold, starving, and desperate, called the number. From that day on, I was pretty much hanging out with these guys, and they took me in, and I learned Chinese. His bosses sent him to New York City to learn the business. While he was living in New York, he watched how others were um, extorting money, um, uh, taking care of the gambling houses, going into the brothels, and understanding the business aspect of an organized gang. After his apprenticeship in NYC, Willis blew into Boston like a nor'easter with a knife and a bad attitude. He became the right hand of the big boss, collecting protection money. So now John is the bodyguard, the enforcer uh, for the top guy in the gang. And so with that, John received that level of respect and stood that high in the gang. In some of the restaurants that line the narrow streets of Boston's Chinatown, the back rooms are makeshift gambling dens where thousands of dollars exchange hands. Willis ran the rackets here. Chinese guy that was in there, um, you know, kind of mocked him because this big white kid, who does he think he is coming in here to take my money? And John understood what he was saying in Chinese and then spoke back to him in Chinese after pretty much destroying the gambling house. I think that earned him respect within the community. But one racket was off limits. They did not sell drugs in Chinatown. So by the time John had been to jail a couple of times uh, for assault and um, uh, various things like that, um, then that's where he made his drug connections, uh, was in jail. Willis saw an opportunity and formed a new syndicate pushing super addictive oxycodone like heroin in a pill. I never want to see people get hurt over, you know, because of an addiction. I was looking at the money side of things, you know. Willis bought the Oxy for nine bucks a pill and sold it on the street for 15, a 60% return. Willis plowed the profits into adult toys, a midnight blue Bentley, a waterfront Florida house with a boat, and prime real estate in Dorchester. I just thought maybe he was just one of those, you know, weirdo rich kids or something. This man is a close friend of Willis. Crime Watch Daily is hiding his face to protect his identity. He recalls a conversation when he learned Willis was on the Fed's radar. I go, uh, what, are you, what are you up to, buddy? He was like, well, it's really not your business. He goes, but basically, I, I'm a supply and demand person. And I go, OK. Shortly after that, the FBI conducted simultaneous raids at his homes in Boston and Florida. He was arrested and charged with multiple counts, including conspiracy to distribute oxycodone and money laundering. They also indicted the mother of his daughter, An Wen, charging her with witness tampering. She pleaded guilty and was sentenced to a year of probation. Don Willis 
almost never touched the pills himself. Um, he hired other people to do that. He was selling thousands of pills at a time. Rather than take a chance with a jury, Willis copped a plea, guilty. He was sentenced to 20 years in the federal pen. His projected release date is 2028. The sentencing memorandum says the details of this case would sound like a Hollywood cliche if they were not true. Hollywood loves mobster movies, and now a film is in development based on Bob Halloran's book.